So, um, put your hand up if you've had a fun time so far today. I reckon we should give all the rice organisers and everyone a big hand for their effort, eh? Woo! You know, when we're all having fun, the, first, the furthest thing from our mind are thinking about the challenges in life. And it's great that we can get away so we don't have to think about it. And to be honest, uh, the last five weeks have been really challenging for me because uh, my friend died five weeks ago. Uh, my friend is 54. I met him a year ago. We became good friends. And uh, he had Minia's disease. He had a uh, dizziness. And one night after dinny, uh, dinner, he lost balance and he, um, and he went head first into the concrete. And then what happened was uh, they quickly called the ambulance, had our banks down, took him to the hospital. He was still conscious. Uh, they didn't do head scans. Three hours later, he went into a coma. He had a brain hemorrhage, and it pushed his brain to a third. And by then, when they did the head scans on him, they said it was too late. They didn't have, he didn't have long to live. I found out on the Friday night. I had a board meeting on the Saturday, and straight after that, I went to Banks and Hospital to visit him and his family. His family were really shocked. And then I said, and then I prayed, and then I spoke to the family and said, what can I do? Um, and uh, his son was in Long Bay Jail, and, uh, his, and I had to break the news to his son. And his son was in jail because he had beaten up an elderly lady in Bankstown a few months before, and he had an impulse control disorder. So I thought, if I'm going to break the news to this guy, it's going to be pretty tough. It's going to be a real challenge. And I went with the daughter, who was a member of our church, and as I was walking into Long Bay Jail with her, I said to her, Susan, you're suffering so much. What's going on? You're like Job in the Bible who suffered so much. How can you remain positive and trust in God? And she said, well, Job said, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken, praise be his name. As I was talking to her, walking along, this is a true story, as I was walking along with her, she suddenly disappeared. And I thought, where did she go? And I looked down and she had fallen into a manhole. The manhole lid had corroded and she plummeted three metres. And she fell down and I thought, what the... And there was like, there was cockroaches and there was a mobile phone and, a, and a, a purse was there. And I went to pull her out and as I was pulling her out, I said, oh, do you want to get your mobile phone and purse? She said, just get me out of here, please! Okay, 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 okay. And I managed to pull her out, you know, in cliffhanger in the opening scene. But she goes, don't let me go, don't let me go! And so she was like that and I managed to pull her out. And we were sitting there and then the coppers came around, a nurse, and they checked her out. They took it to Prince of Wales to get checked out. Praise God, she only had cuts and bruises. She didn't have any broken bones. And then I went inside to break the news to Kenneth. And But before that, I prayed with Susan. I said, Susan, let's talk to God. Let's ask God to prepare the way for us. And um, we said, uh, God, please help Kenneth be ready for us to break the news. And as soon as I went in, Kenneth looked at me and he said, James, my dad is unconscious, isn't he? He doesn't have long to live. And I said, it's pretty serious, Kenneth. He said, what's going to happen to my dad when he dies? And I said, Kenneth, a few weeks ago your dad got baptised and he told everyone he had a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus promises that when you belong to him, you live with him, you die with him, you live with him forever with God, he'll take your soul, he'll take your father's soul and give him a new body. Just like when you take a SIM card out of your mobile phone and you put it in a new mobile phone and have new options. And he went, oh, yeah. And he said, James... I believe in God. I want to be baptised when I get out of prison. Now, Kenneth didn't get on very well with his mum, but he looked at his mum who didn't believe in God, and he said to his mum, Mum, you need to go to baptism class. You need to believe in God, because I want to see you in heaven, because I love you. And uh, she was shocked. Firstly, because he had also hurt her a few months before, and she'd just seen that he'd been taking it so well. What would cause all these chain of events, events to be seen as such a great challenge to be turned around, but God would be honoured. And it's been pretty hard, but I'm comforted by the words of Jesus in John 14 verse 6, and he said one of the most challenging statements that every one of us here today need to deal with. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Now, let's notice what Jesus did not say. If you know the place to where you're going, what's the opposite of knowing where you're going? Who can tell me? You're lost. Okay. What's the opposite of the truth? Lies. What's the opposite of life? 
death. Okay, Jesus did not say, hey, I am the lost, the lie and the death. <laughs> Come to me. I can give you a world of pain and insecurity. <laughs> and yet, friends, let's face it here. I'm just meeting you here for this very short time, but we are all have been exposed to being lost. Maybe we've been lost in a supermarket going, where am I going? But maybe we've felt lost in life going, where am I going in life? Where am I? I don't know the way to live. I'm a bit confused. Or we've experienced lies. Or maybe if we're a bit more honest, we've actually told lies to other people. And when people have lied to us, we think, I get really angry. You lie to me and I find out, I want to smack your face. (laughs) Because we want to know what's going on. And very serious... A lot of us may know, put your hand up if you know someone who's died. Let's be honest. So even in this group here, a lot of us here have tasted death in a very personal way. And I want to encourage you, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life, he's saying, I am your complete security. I want to give you the way to God. I want you to know what's going on. I want you to have a life with God so you can live beyond this life. And this is the hope that I have, that I will one day see my dear friend who died five weeks ago, when I'll see him in heaven in that new body. And a great joy for me, and I think for a lot of the leaders here today, is that we will be partying together like this in heaven, around God. Because, folks, the greatest challenge in life for us is to realise that life is not about us. Life is all about God. Life is all about what Jesus has done when he died on the cross in your place and in my place for our sins so that we could be friends with God. And there is great hope. And I want to encourage you today to think about that. And I'm going to leave you all today with a hands-on challenge. And the hands-on challenge I'm going to leave with you is a hand wrap-up. And here we go. God made the world with his capable hands, for this was always part of his plans. We said to God, Talk to the hand. God's response was, get out of my land. God's heart was filled with pain, filled with hurt, filled with love. God offers us the peace of the dove. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Come and enjoy this eternal fun. Eternal life comes at the highest price. Die, Son of God, we're throwing the dice. Die on the cross, I'm the boss. Conquer death in three days. No fake. We all have an eternal choice to make. What will it be? Slave? Slave or free? Say to God, up yours. Or to pray to God, I'm yours. Love him to death. Love him to life. Be God's perfect, beautiful wife. Jesus is surely coming again. Reply to these handshake friends. And be God's friend. This is the last talk for the day And while the microphone is dropping here Folks I'm a matchmaker here today God Meet the people you love here People here Meet God God loves you Do you want to love God? And if you want to love God today And be friends with God I'm going to say a prayer And friendship begins by saying sorry, because we've broken God's heart. If you'd like to pray with me and say, I'm sorry for living my way. I trust in you, Jesus. Give me your spirit. I want to be connected with you. This would bring God the greatest joy. Let's pray. (laughs) Dear God, we're sorry for showing you disrespect. Sorry for breaking your heart. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to pay the highest price for my sins. Please forgive me. Please give me your spirit today. I want to be your friend. I want to listen to you. In Jesus' name, amen.